This video is about fan efficacy, and fan efficacy is simply CFM divided by watts. I'm going to give it to you right off the top. Fan efficacy is CFM divided by watts, just a very simple ratio of watts to CFM. California requires that you must have at least a 0.58 fan efficacy. Now, when we say fan efficacy, we're talking specifically about the blower. So the fan that moves the air around the inside of the building, not the condenser fan. So it's fan efficacy of the blower motor. And so in MeasureQuick, for example, they show fan efficacy as part of the measurements you can take if you are using a power meter, such as the Redfish IDVM550, which is the meter that I'm using in my demonstration here. Uh, you use that to measure the wattage, which is simply volts times amps times power factor in order to get that, those watts. And that's actually very important when doing this, the power factor piece, because many of these blower motors have very low power factors. That's just the nature of a lot of ECM motors. So you have to take that into account if you're going to get a true wattage number. So again, you take the CFM that the blower is producing and then you divide it by the watts measured with a power quality meter like the Redfish meter shown. Now that's one piece of the equation, but the most challenging piece of the equation is actually figuring out what CFM is the equipment producing. Now if the equipment is new and you know exactly how it's set up, you can go to the fan tables for this piece of equipment like the one shown for the unit that I'm working on, and you can go across, find the static pressure, and figure out what the CFM is. And generally that's going to be quite accurate so long as the system is set up exactly as specified in the fan tables. And then you also have to take into account if the thing has gotten dirty or anything has changed with the operation of the equipment. You've got to take that into account. If you don't have that ability, then you have to use something like the true flow grid from the energy conservatory, or you have to do a duct reverse, or maybe use an airflow hood. All of these things can be quite challenging to get your CFM measurement. Some people will talk about using the temperature rise equation with electric heat or a gas furnace. Those have their own challenges, which I've talked about a lot on the podcast. We're not going to go into that. But ultimately, in order to do this properly, you have to both have correct wattage, which requires being able to measure wattage directly and also taking into account power factor. You can't just do volts times amps on a motor. That does not equal wattage on a motor because you also have to do that volts times amps times power factor. And then you have to know your CFM. Once you have those, fan efficacy is quite easy to do, but that's you know, challenging to get in the first place, which is where MeasureQuick does make it a lot easier because it brings it all together and gives you that fan efficacy. And again, like we mentioned, a 0.58 or better fan efficacy is really what you're looking for. And that just simply means that you're moving 1,000 CFM for 580 watts, if that's what you were moving. Um, so very simple math in that way. And so if you put in less wattage to get the same CFM, that is a more uh, efficient or effective, which is really what efficacy comes from. It's a more effective blower. In the, both the case of PSC, permanent split capacitor, and ECM, electronically commutated motors, in both cases, when that blower wheel gets dirtier, or when that evaporator coil gets dirtier, in both cases, they're going to, it's going to affect the efficacy of that motor. In the case of the ECM motors that we see more often today, the way that it's going to affect it is because as that motor attempts to maintain that constant torque or airflow output, so as it becomes more restrictive and it's ramping up in order to attempt to produce the same airflow, it's going to do it at a cost of higher wattage. So as that wattage increases in order to do the same amount of work, that fan efficacy is going to decrease. So it is a useful thing to look at, and it is going to tell you, you know, is this how hard is this thing working from a wattage standpoint in order to produce the desired CFM. So this is the easiest way on a new system to find the airflow. Right, so I'm just going to enter the product number. We go down to the product data. All right, so we got our airflow delivery chart. This is just the basic one. And you'd really need to check the static pressure to make sure you were in the right zone. So we have the 002 and it's the 024. So if you go over, you see nominal AC cooling, 700 CFM. If you wanna get more advanced, you can go down into the fan charts and you can see the acceptable range is from point to zero to point four. Look down at the fan curves here. This is for the 002. And if you have the 024, you can see that we maintain pretty much the same. If you look at the look at the cooling airflow, it's that solid line. You can see it stays pretty pretty much right at 700 all the way up to 0.6, and then it starts to drop off. This system here um, generally only runs about 0.3 external static as measured before. 
So if you if you want to use your fan charts, that's the way to do it. Otherwise, you can do a duct traverse or something like that. All right, so I'm going to pull up measure quick. Connect. So we are connected here. We've got 111 watts. Like I said, we've already calculated on this unit that it moves when it's in full speed. Non-dehumidify mode, it moves about 700 CFM right thereabouts, and so I've already manually entered that. So 1.1 amps, if you just took amps times the volts, you'd be about double that wattage. But because it's multiplied by this power factor, which is very low on ECMs, 0.46, that's where we come up with that 110 watts. So if you were to just do volts times amps, that would be VA, not wattage. You can see here, this is milliamps. So it's 1.13 amps. It measures it very accurately. And this is a 208 building, so that's where we have the 213 volts. So now all we have to do, we'll, we'll clear it and just recapture it, capture the, that data. So now this data is captured. Now if we go back, see our fan efficacy. It's 0.16, which is very efficient. So for the 700 CFM it's running, it's doing it very efficiently. Now that power factor does factor into total circuit load because the amperage is still higher. But if you were to just have measured this with a non power quality meter, you would have thought that your wattage was significantly higher than this because of not taking into account the power factor. So it's important that you measure your airflow accurately and you measure your wattage utilizing volts times amps times power factor in real time. So that's fan efficacy. Thanks for watching.